Hey guys, Joel Seidman here. In this video, I want to go over proper push-up technique. The main reason that I want to do that is because most individuals, including trainers and coaches, uh, perform push-ups incorrectly. I would say at least 90% of the push-ups and push-up tutorials that we see online, uh, video instructions uh, are incorrect. Um, and I want to get into the reasons why that is occurring. So let's start off with talking about the type of movement that a push-up is. First off, a push-up is not a linear movement like most people think it is. They think when they're doing a push-up, their whole body kind of goes down in one uh, same linear fashion, and it shouldn't. A push-up is actually a rotational movement because we have a pivot point or an axis of rotation, which is our feet in this example. Um, when we have a pivot point or an axis of rotation, our body will produce a rotational movement. Okay, It's not a linear movement. So if you think about it like that, it totally changes what's happening in a push-up, okay? So uh, the body will move, like I said, in a rotational fashion. So the head, the shoulders, the chest will actually uh, move in a slightly greater range of motion than the hips and the uh, legs and the feet because the farther you get from that pivot point, the greater the range of motion will occur, okay? It's just how rotational movements occur. So. Um, let me kind of show you what I'm talking about here when I'm, when I'm doing a push-up, okay? So instead of the whole body kind of going down in unison like this, we're gonna sit everything nice and tall. I'm gonna explain that in just a second. We're gonna rotate or pivot around our feet right there. Again, pivoting around the feet. Okay, so it looks like my hips are a little bit high, but they're not. What I'm doing there is I'm hollowing out my core as I should, again, because of the rotational movement. And the last thing that I'm doing, okay, which a lot of people screw this up. They think, oh, I want to squeeze my glutes when I'm doing a push-up. That is the last thing you want to do. It's probably one of the worst cues you can give someone when they're doing a push-up. When you're doing a push-up, you're essentially holding a plank position, okay, or an isometric contraction that is resisting extension forces, okay? The last thing you want to do is actually contribute to that by producing greater extension forces. If anything, you're actually producing some flexion forces to resist extension, and those forces are produced from the core muscles and from the hip flexors, okay? Um, so you're not gonna have this, this glute squeeze, and you're not gonna have this overly flat back position. There will be a natural curvature of the lumbar spine um, while pulling the stomach in, setting the shoulders back, and the hips will be tall because as you hollow the core and flex the hips as you should, okay, um, your hips will be slightly higher than the rest of your body, okay? That's in order to avoid a collapsed position. Next thing that I want to talk about with the push-up is uh, foot placement. And you probably noticed when I was just showing you the push-up, uh, the feet were pretty uh, tall. I was on the tippy toes, and that's what we want. A lot of people have this sagging position where their feet are kind of sitting back here. We want to be tall on the tippy toes. Again, that's going to allow the best movement according to the type of movement that this is, which is a rotational movement. Um, and we don't want to be sagging back here. We almost want the feet to be uh, parallel to the wall and back of me. Not here, but right there. Nice and tall on my tippy toes, right there, okay? Uh, in regards to the foot placement, it is absolutely critical for a push-up. One thing you'll see people do very commonly is they'll just drop down into a push-up position and they'll think that, hey, their feet are fine, you know, they don't need to really adjust them. Well, when we're doing something like a dumbbell press, okay, or even a barbell press, we have the luxury of being able to adjust our position by simply moving the bar up or down if it doesn't feel right. So for example, if I'm up here and I feel like you know everything's too high, uh, my shoulders are kind of elevated, what do I do? I pull the dumbbells or I pull the barbell down, okay, by depressing, retracting my shoulders more, and I basically create a better uh, position, better technique. We can't do that with a push-up because you obviously can't move the floor. But what you do, you move your body, okay, by simply adjusting your feet, okay, and just pretty much keeping your hands in the same spot. So if I start off like this, okay, I know that when I come down to a push-up, my hands are too far in front of me. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to make subtle adjust adjustments with my feet, and I'm going to continue making those adjustments for oftentimes the first one or two reps until I find the ideal position until I'm locked in right here, okay? So if I feel like I'm in here or in here, I do something called micro adjustments. So again, just watch my feet on this. I'm gonna go down, and I'm gonna say, okay, where's my position? Ah, there it is, right there. That feels optimal, okay? That's too far forward, that's too far back, so I'm going to make micro adjustments, okay? That's very important because it allows the ideal 
uh, body placement to occur the entire time. Last thing I want to go over here is a uh, hand activation. Most of the time you'll see people just kind of plaster their hands flat to the floor when they're doing a push-up. And again, that's incorrect. That would be analogous to someone having really flat feet when they're doing like a squat or any type of lower body exercise. Uh, whenever we do a lower body exercise, we want to see a good arch in the feet because we have that active foot activation, okay? Not a passive foot, okay? But an active foot. Same exact thing with a push-up. We want the hands to be activated, almost cupping or gripping the floor like this, not a flat plaster, okay? And the reason why people often do that is because they're not screwing their elbows or tucking their elbows back like they should. As soon as I depress and retract my scapula, and as long as I keep my hands gripped tightly into the ground, my hands are automatically going to activate and cup the floor like they should. So my elbows are out here, hands are kind of plastered. Tuck my elbows, again, you see almost like this arch pop up in my hands right here. Again, that's flat position, no good. Right there, we want to cut the floor. Okay, so that hand position is really critical because it gives us better activation and innervation and, and signaling all the way up and down the kinetic chain. Um, and we just get better uh, technique and better muscle recruitment. So those are the things I wanted to go over with the push-up. Uh, give them a try and let me know what you think. All right, thanks.